Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Forex PNL. Today is Wednesday and um, it's time for me to do um, the midweek Forex forecast. Uh, like I told you guys earlier last week, I said I'm going to be bringing back the uh, midweek work Forex forecast, which I'll be trying to put out um, every Wednesday morning, all right, Eastern obviously. So um, again, this is the first one in a very long time, all right, so um, I'm just going to, in these sessions, I'm just going to, you know, kind of breeze through um, the eight majors, okay, and um, including Dixie as well. And also just to give you guys an idea what has happened earlier in the week compared to the um, weekly Forex forecast that we put out on the weekends, okay? All right, so without any further delays, guys, let's just get it started. Uh, we've had a few fundamental releases um, earlier this week. Uh, as you can see, uh, the most recent one being the non-farm employment change from the United States axis. Um, that was about an hour ago. But then um, right now, as you can see, we have um, actually in the next maybe 30 minutes, we have the um, interest rates from the um, Canadian axis coming out. Okay, so obviously that's going to most likely be a high impact uh, on the Canadian pairs. All right. Uh, we still have um, Fed Chair uh, Power testifying at 10 a.m. And we have obviously the Bank of Canada press conference coming up at 10.30. So we still have um, a lot of high impact news coming out for the U.S. and the uh, Canadian axis. Okay. All right. So I just wanted you to have that in mind as we do this analysis okay because i don't know what time you're going to be watching this analysis all right but then going back to the um to the um charts uh what we're seeing right now is a uh, dixie okay we've had pretty much a bearish week uh as you can see here this was monday's price action quite um thin volume tuesday's price action a little bigger than that of a monday and then you can see on wednesday um being today the markets pretty much is now becoming very very bearish okay and we are heading for pretty much the lows of that um inside bar formation that we have on the um, weekly time frame if you guys remember from the weekend all right so let's see let's see this is looking tricky because i'm um, coming into this week i'm i'm actually expecting that um you know maybe this week can still end bullish believe you me all right because at the end of the day all of this is happening within this demand zone all right uh, until price begins to clearly break below the lows of this particular demand zone area um i would not be keen in searching for short opportunities because still remember we have a lot of um high impact news this week price can easily take off these lows right here only for price to probably get to let's say 103 and then from there just give you a nice bounce again to the upside it's very very possible okay so be very very careful if you're going short but in terms of um, technical analysis uh, right now this currency this pair is dix is looking um bearish okay we are really respecting supply zones as you can see here we do have um, a very nice um supply zone in here you see that our price gave us a nice push to the downside all right and then give us a dip into that um, supply zone area and then from there you can see we are making new lows at least breaking these levels of structure that we have in this area so it's looking more bearish but um all of this is still happening first of all within that inside bar formation and secondly inside this larger demand zone that we do have on the daily all right so just stay guided as you make your trading of, um, um decisions so um, next up is going to be um, US dollar Swiss francs. All right. Now for US dollar Swiss francs, not much has really changed. This one is behaving as anticipated. If you remember in the weekend Forex forecast, I told you guys keep an eye around um, 0 0.8800. Uh, this demand zone area, as you can see, this is a demand zone that led to the break of all of these levels of structure that we have um, to the left. Okay. So um, price, I think was somewhere right around here. Markets opened. Uh, we got that deep into that demand zone right around very close to that 8800 level didn't quite get there yet all right but you can see that the bulls are now coming in slowly but surely okay so this one is still behaving as anticipated maybe from here who knows maybe we might still get that bullish continuation that we are anticipating okay all right um so this one not much of an update just um you know giving you an update in terms of what price is doing behaving as we had anticipated okay all right um that's it for us dollar swiss francs next up is going to be euro us dollar now euro us dollar keeps pushing to the upside okay um personally i would have preferred to see a bearish break as i had explained in the weekend forex forecast but as you can see that is why first of all this is a forecast and two um you have to you know react to what the market is doing you don't you don't anticipate okay you have to react to what the market is doing all right um as you can see here the market just continues pushing to the upside right now it is pretty much battling with the top of that inside bar formation that we have from the weekly okay this is the inside bar formation so right now price is pretty much um battling with the top of that inside bar formation um right now um again looking more bullish to be honest in my opinion right now we are pretty much headed towards that 1.0900 um institutional price level which in its own corresponds to the top of this um resistance area that we have on euro dollar okay so again 
like I explained in that video, if we begin to clearly break above uh, 1.0900, something of this nature clearly taking off 1.0900 then upon any pullbacks towards demand zones that form i'll be looking for opportunities to go long for further continuations to the upside okay if from current market price the market just begins to um, turn around respecting this boundary respecting this re resistance level and let's say we begin to turn around again then we can probably upon maybe the break of um this sub uh, demand zone area that we have there uh we can probably start searching for short opportunities for further continuations to the downside okay but right now it is looking more bullish than bearish all right now um next up is going to be uh, let me see british pounds some us dollar now for british pounds us dollar again in this one if you remember i told you guys that um you know we are looking like we have like a, a like a head and shoulder formation on the daily when we are right around here but right now it is not looking that way anymore even though we still have a lot of um, elements of a resistance on this chart okay we do have this um let's like say line here that has been working as some um, support and resistance you can see works as support here here and here finally gets broken here and since then it's been working as resistance resistance all right and uh, well maybe again who knows a resistance from here for maybe another rotation to the downside nothing is impossible but i just wanted to make sure that you guys are seeing all of this and uh, making sure that you are not um you know trading into levels of a resistance not buying into levels of a resistance on your charts okay um right now looking more bullish but again we have this element of resistance that we have right around here and also obviously around 1.2800 institutional price level which corresponds to the top of this um uh, let's say resistance area that we have in our charts okay so a few elements of resistance to keep an eye on if you're trading british pounds and us dollar but if from right around here you begin to get a signal that this thing is about to turn around it might be a nice opportunity to catch you a very nice shot for further continuations to the downside okay so again follow your strategy but this is what i am seeing right now on my charts okay all right that's it for um, british pounds and us dollar next up is going to be new zealand dollar us dollar now this this one is obviously looking more bullish than bearish we actually have now made it above i think the high of that okay no no no. we actually have now made it above the um high of that resistance area we have um right around here i think it's very clear on the four hours time frame you notice this area has been working as a resistance on our charts and um finally right now the market has broken that 0 0.6100 area and um, right now you can see that we're getting um you know candle closes even above that level of resistance so this right here is looking more bullish than bearish um obviously we do have um this candle right here okay which is pretty much the origin of the the move and then uh well on this particular uh, currency pair uh well let's say any pullbacks towards demand zones in my own opinion um, i'm going to be looking for opportunities to go long for further continuations to the upside okay if if we do get oops why can't i pick this okay if we do get uh, a, a clear break above all right any pullbacks into this area right around this let's say 6105 6100 levels anywhere from right around here in my own opinion any reversals i'll be looking for an opportunity to go long for further continuations to the upside all right that's going to be my uh, preferred course of action in new zealand dollar us dollar at this point all right now next up us dollar canadian dollar now for us dollar canadian dollar canadian dollar is now giving us some push to the downside um this one almost played to perfection if you remember i told you guys this is a key level of um previous level of uh, structure okay previous level of resistance that was now broken and now most likely walking a support on our charts okay and as you can see right here well um markets opened and from here we the bulls came in but we didn't quite take off these previous highs and you can see right now we're getting another rotation well um like i said earlier we do have interest rate decisions coming out in about let's say 18 minutes time okay um so who knows what's going to happen there uh that is actually going to de determine where this currency pair is going to go uh if that fundamental comes out and uh, well we do get a push to the upside then chances are we are going to be continuing bullish for a while but uh in the event that it comes out and well we get a break to the downside breaking these trend lines clearly then chances are and uh, well we might be continuing to the downside in us dollar canadian dollar okay personally i prefer to see a a, a, a bullish breakout because that is in line with the technicals that we have here on our charts okay all right um next up is going to be um us dollar can us dollar japanese yen well us dollar japanese yen is trading in this very nice and um, four hours range as we can see this is the four hours range and right now price pretty much gave us this um push to the downside 
towards the um, lows of that um, range, okay? So, well, again, your guess is as good as mine. Let's see what happens from right around here. We're getting a, re a little rejection as we approach the lows of that range. Um, also, we have a demand area in here as well, okay? So, who knows? From here, the markets can easily give us another rotation to the upside towards the highs, okay? If you're a range trader, this probably might be your bread and butter. But personally, I don't trade ranges. I'm personally going to be waiting for a clear breakout out of this range and then from there i make my trading decision so that being said if from here now us dollar japanese yen gives me a clear break of these lows of the range okay to the downside if also possible taking off this demand zone completely i would love that setup and upon any pullbacks into supply zones i'll be looking for an opportunity to go short for further continuations to the downside all right and in the case that we respect this um this um range and the market begins to turn around then i might even look into smaller time frames to start trading off of demand zones that form on our charts okay and then um in the event that we do break off of this um range top uh obviously i'll be waiting for pullbacks for further continuations to the upside off of demand zone areas okay now um next up is going to be let me see british pounds and japanese yen and that is the last one that we are going to be reviewing uh do i have anything in here let me see uh nothing really to be honest the market has not really made a move we got a push to the upside okay uh into this demand zone actually price is respecting this demand zone area that we have here okay uh you can see this demand zone that led to the break of this level of structure price gave us a dip into that demand zone and we pushed off from there but notice how we are not making a new high in this particular currency pair and from here now the bears are now coming back into this market so a little ranging in my own opinion but um keep an eye obviously on this will i say kind of like a demand area a buying area that we have on our charts you see the first time price dipped in we got a very huge reaction off of it okay because this area here broke this level of structure broke this level of structure broke this level of structure yes did not make a new high but it broke all these levels of um, structures okay so um in my own opinion um that is um a, a probably a significant level on our charts and um who knows from here maybe the markets can start giving us a tumble to the upside okay but um well that's pretty much all i'm seeing right now um this is going to be the updates from the midweek for forest for the midweek forex forecast hopefully you guys gain some value from this video if you did please do not forget to click on that like button subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell so that you will always get an update when i make a video cheers and have a nice day bye bye